All right, hello everybody and welcome to my 40,000 subscriber and my one year anniversary video. First off, I would like to say thank you to everyone that subscribed, watched, liked, comment, commented on all my videos. You guys have really supported me throughout my year and I can't say thank you enough. Um, so on Facebook and the Code Zero forums, I asked for a couple questions. You guys submitted quite a few, so I'm going to answer some of them here. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, and I hope you guys will enjoy. First off, I'm going to say I don't know how to pronounce all your guys' names, so if I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm going to skip it. And if I'm going to give it a shot, I'm going to give it a shot. I'll probably mess it up because I'm terrible when it comes with names, so I apologize now. Um, and also, just to let you guys know, I'm currently not playing GTA. This is just what I put up in the background so you guys have something to look at. I didn't want to be trying to think of answers and read these questions while I'm gaming. So just enjoy whatever I'm doing in GTA right now. I really don't know because I haven't recorded it yet. So yeah, anyway, we are going to get into it. The first question, these are going to be off of my Facebook, which is going to be from Ryan Stewart. He asks, how did you discover LCPDFR? I discovered LCPDFR the way a lot of people did through YouTube. I was looking up GTA videos and I saw a Crown Victoria in a thumbnail of a video and I went, how did that person get a Crown Victoria in GTA 4? Clicked on it and that opened up this whole world of mods and LCPDFR and all this and I just fell right into it. Sean Healy asks, what made you decide to play LCPDFR? Uh, when I started playing LCPDFR, I was really looking into the law enforcement career. So I wanted to be a cop, and plus I really loved police cars and flashing lights. I kind of had that shiny object syndrome and loved everything about it, and I just decided to start recording it. Jack Prince asked, how long have you been playing GTA 4 LCPDFR? I've been playing it for probably about two years now, maybe two and a half years. It's been quite some time. I can't remember exactly when I started. It, I'm going to say anywhere from two to three years. Sam Olson asks, how, do you, how long do you plan on doing YouTube videos? That is really up to you guys. I'm going to do videos as long as you guys keep watching and liking and supporting me throughout the throughout my YouTube career, if you want to call it that. But I don't have any plans of stopping anytime soon. As long as you guys are with me, I'm going to go as long as I possibly can. On to the next question. Thomas Wagner asks, how hard is it to YouTube? It's pretty tough, especially doing daily videos and different games. It's a full-time job. You know, I, I, I spend a lot of hours, a lot of time, a lot of effort into every single one of my videos. So it's, it's not something that's easy to do. Uh, Max Yoner asked, just destroyed your last name, don't know how to say that, I'm sorry Max, but Max asked, how long will it be until you release a Drunk Bugs video? Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to release a Drunk Bugs video, I'm a little worried about putting my drunk self out on the internet, uh, that might come to bite me in the ass later on down the road in life. Uh, if I do, it's going to be uh, it's going to be in November, my birthday, my 21st birthday is November 2nd, so if I do one, it'll be after November 2nd. Nick Anderson asked, do you know the people, do you know the Code Zero people in real life, and how did you get such an awesome voice? I don't know the Code Zero people in real life, I've only met them over the internet, I would like that to change, I would like to meet them in real life, and I along with everyone else in the world, hate their own voice. I don't like my voice, but I've been told quite a few times that I have a good voice for radio, and I think those people are crazy, but thank you. Jeremy Walker asked, Have you ever wanted to not do GTA LCPDFR videos because it gets boring? And if it does, do you do it anyway for your subscribers? Uh... Yes, because I've been playing LCPDFR for two to three years now, and I've been playing GTA 4 since 2008, the day it came out. Um, I've been I've played it obsessively. I know every street, I know every building, I know every. Uh, and yes, I do continue to play it for my subscribers. I know you guys like my LCPDFR videos, and I want to make you guys happy with the videos I put out. So there are some times that I don't feel like playing LCPDFR when I do, 
but I have a good time anyway. Noah Daves asks, which member of the Code Zero group do you think is the youngest? Uh, I don't need to think who's the youngest. I know I am the youngest, uh, which is surprising. A lot of people think I'm the oldest because of my voice. I understand I have a really, really deep voice, uh, but I'm actually the youngest. I'm only 20. I'll be 21 in November. Uh, and the second youngest is Zach, and I am not sure who the oldest is. I haven't asked. <laughs> Jack Huffman asked, what was the first car that you ever drove? That was my first car that I ever owned, which was a 95 Mazda MX-6 that got totaled. And that gave me the money to buy my Crown Victoria. So it was kind of a good and bad thing. Uh, Chris, I can't pronounce your last name, I apologize, asked, what's your favorite car? Uh, if I had to pick one, I'm going to go ahead and pick two because I can't decide. Either the Gen 3 Mazda RX-7, so that's 1993 and up, or a Toyota Supra. I like both of those cars equally. Uh, Jesus Martinez asks, are you married? No, I am not. I am not married. Jacob Palzer asks, do you have a family, and if so, how many kids? I have a family, as in parents and a brother, but I am currently single. I'm not dating. Uh, I don't have any kids, thankfully. I, I'm only 20. I don't want kids right now. <laughs> Jacob Nelson asks, what will be your favorite part of GTA 5? Honestly, I think it's going to be the map. I have been in Liberty City for years now, since 2008, and that's the worst part, is we can change the vehicles, we can change the EMB, we can change textures, but you can't change the map. You can add on maps like the Red Dead Desert or something like that, which livens it up a bit. But honestly, it's it's the map. That's what I'm looking forward to be. I, I just I want a new map. I wanna I wanna play a game and learn it. I haven't done that in a very long time, uh, and that's something that I'm missing. Nicholas, again, can't pronounce your last name, I apologize, asks. What is your favorite part of being in Code Zero Gaming? My favorite part has to be the friendships. I mean, I've met these people, I know some of them for a year now, some of them less than that, and our friendships are, it's a little Code Zero family, it really is. I mean, uh, the friendships I've come to get through Code Zero will last hopefully years and years and years. All right, these next set of questions are from the Code Zero forums. There's a couple people that ask multiple questions, so I'm going to get the get through those quickly. Uh, first, we're going to start off with Alf503. He asks, when you joined YouTube, did you ever imagine you would reach 40,000 subscribers? And did you ever think that Code Zero would grow as big as it has? Uh, no and no. When I started YouTubing, I was in LCDPS. And I just wanted to record the patrols that we were in. That was about it. And then I started to get subscribers, and I started to do my single player series, and people really enjoyed it. And then after I left LCDPS, me and a couple other people joined, or created Code Zero Gaming, and it's just, it's blown up from there. So it's, I never thought it would get to where it is, and it has, and it's, it's amazing. Code 103 asked, what do you believe has been the reason for your success and what are your plans for the future of your channel? Uh, I think the only reason I really got successful on YouTube was timing. I started my channel as I think two or three other big to medium LCPDFRs were stopping making videos. So there was a lot of people searching YouTube to find someone that was doing LCPDFR videos and I just happened to be starting my LCPDFR videos around the same time. Uh, I also got a lot of help from KPAX, uh, which he doesn't have, he deleted his YouTube so a lot of people don't know of him now, but on his 10,000 subscriber video he linked my first commentary and that gave me a huge boost so he's one of the reasons why, you know, I started to grow in subscribers. Uh, and then my future plans for my channel is I want to steer away from being an LCPDFR channel to a gaming channel. Uh, I would like to do Let's Plays, although on YouTube Let's Plays are a little iffy right now, but when that gets ironed out, I would like to, I'd like to do Let's Plays and play other games and 
bring you guys along with me and all sorts of different types of games that we can get into. So Vance Meeks asked, he asked quite a few questions, so I'm going to get through them as fast as I can. One, have you ever plan do you ever plan on getting another Crown Victoria? Yes, but it's going to be a secondary vehicle, uh, and that'll be way down the line. Two, Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Uh, three, are you going to be... Are you going to do the Jeff and Bugs Morning Show ever again? Yes, and that's all I'm going to say as of right now. On a scale of 1 to 10, how fun do you consider LCPDFR after all this time? Uh, I think single player, I would probably say about a 6. Uh, 6 to an 8. Uh, it's, it's enjoyable, but it's not my favorite. Multiplayer, I'd say 8 to a 10, because it's not really the game. It's more the interactions with everyone in Code Zero that makes we have such a great time in LCPFR. He also asked, how was the name Bay Area Bugs formed? I was given the nickname Bugs by a friend, um, and then I live in the Bay Area of California, so I added Bay Area Bugs. I gave myself a second G just to kind of stand out from the other Bugses out there, and uh, that's just pretty much how it was created, just as a screen name, and then it just stuck. Would you ever meet a fan in person in a public place? Uh, I would, as long as I am joined by everyone else in Code Zero. So I'm hoping that one day uh, Code Zero can all meet and hold kind of a uh, Code Zero con or something along those lines where we kind of meet subscribers in a, wherever we decide to all meet up. I think that would be really cool. Uh, would I ever do it one on one or one with a bunch of other, with a bunch of fans? Mm, as of right now, no. But who knows, maybe one day that'll change. What sport do you like the most? Uh, I'm into football. My favorite team is the Raiders. I understand as you're typing the hate comment right now about the Raiders. Yes, they suck. I'm not going to defend them. They're the worst team in the NFL, but they're my team. Someone's got to be their fan. So I am a Raider fan. I am a football fan. So... All you 49er fans, go ahead and tell me the 49ers are great. I understand they're a great team. Raiders suck. Let's move on. What's the most annoying question you're asked? Uh, I get asked a lot about technical support questions, IT questions when it comes to like what kind of computer specs can run LCPDFR and people that have uh, LCPDFR problems. The thing is, I'm a YouTuber. So I make LCPDFR videos. I really don't have the time to help everybody with their problems. There's a lot like LCPDFR or GPM there, or even the Code Zero forums. There's a lot of forums out there that you can go and you can start a topic on your problem. And a lot of people that know a lot about LCPDFR can help you that have the time. Unfortunately, I just don't have the time to help anybody. It's either I can help, I can either sit there all day and help people and not make videos or make videos. So, I just, that has to be the most annoying, is just getting constantly the IT questions. So we're going to move on to AST Dylan. He asked, if you were given the chance to learn how to make GTA 4 mods, would you? Absolutely. I've wanted to learn Z Modeler for a very long time. I own it, and I've been tinkering around with it, and it's something that I would love to do. I'd love to learn how to model, and... The only thing is, if I ever do make GTA 4 mods when it comes to cars or something like that, uh, I'm not going to release it to the public. It's going to be something for my personal use or use in Code Zero. Reason being, I've been on LCPDFR and GPM for a long time now, years, and I've seen what happens when modelers or, you know, artists uh, release something without crediting somebody properly, and it's just, it's a mess that I don't want to get into so if i ever do it's just going to be for my personal use but at this point in gta's lifetime at least lcpdfr's lifetime i don't know if i'm going to ever get into making lcpdfr mods i would like to get in get into learning how to model for other reasons maybe eventually when gta 5 comes out on pc uh dylan also asked the second question that i've pretty much already answered so i'm going to go to his third which is what is your favorite drink uh my favorite drink has to be an Arnold Palmer of any kind. It can be peace tea, it can be Snapple, it can be whatever. Uh, but pretty much half lemonade, half iced tea. I love it. I don't know why, I just do. On to the next. Nick Claywell asked, 
outside of video games, what do you do for fun? Um, I really enjoy working on cars, cleaning cars, uh, just tinkering with them really and just spending time driving is something that I really, really enjoy doing. Um, and unfortunately I haven't been able to do for the past three months. Um, but I'm hoping to get back into like tinkering with my car once I get it and, um, start just doing the things that I like doing, just messing around, repairing things. And it's just, it's something that I, I enjoy working with my hands. Mr. Canadian Tech asks, when you get your new car, are you going to do vlogs in the car with the pivot heads? Yes, I do plan on doing that whenever I get the car. Uh, I'm going to try to set it up so I can record the first time I ever drive in real life using a manual. I've uh, My only experience when it comes to driving a stick is my G27. And to be honest, my G27 is pretty much what made me want to own a manual car. Uh, I've just, I know the functions, I know how to do it, I, I know all that, I've just never done it. So I'm excited to actually do it, um, and I'm hoping that I can record it for you guys, I think that'll be really cool. Um, but yeah, I definitely plan on doing sort of a, I want to do like a weekly or uh, kind of a bi-weekly um, vlog, if you want to call it that, with the pivot heads or some sort of other camera as I drive around. I think it'll be kind of cool just to show you guys what I'm like outside of YouTube, outside, or not outside of YouTube, but outside of gaming. All right, on to the last set of questions by HB. He asked, what do you do for a living? I YouTube. It's a full-time job. I work probably about the same amount of hours that you would if you had a minimum wage job. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, I pretty much just wake up and YouTube and <laughs> YouTube some more and then go to sleep. So it's that's what I do for a living. He also asked, how are you able to combine your YouTube hobbies along with your personal life? Think of work, meeting with friends, etc. I, if I do want to go do something outside of, you know, me just sitting in my room editing and recording and all that, um, I make sure to... I work really hard for a couple hours, I edit my footage, I upload my videos, and I schedule them for release, so I get a couple days ahead, and then I'm free the next day or that day to go do whatever I want and hang out with friends and not have to worry about videos not going out. His third question is, have you ever looked at your own channel and thought of it as one viewing it for the first time, and what would be the first thing you'd like to improve on? Uh, honestly, I think my thumbnails. Um, when I started YouTubing, I didn't know anything about video editing. I didn't know anything about graphic design. Um, and I would love to learn more about graphic design. It's something that I've really gotten interested in. And I try to push myself and change what I do. And I'm still in the process of learning it. I'm hoping that one day I can be up to Jeff's level. Because honestly, when I go over to Jeff's channel and I see his thumbnails, they, they blow me away. He's... He's just amazing when it comes to graphic design, and I hope to get to his level one day. But it takes a lot of work, and I'm still in the process of trying to learn and improve on it. So that's that's what I would improve on. His final question and the final question for the video is going to be, which of your featured games do you like the most? And which of your featured games gameplay do you like editing the most? I really enjoy playing Euro Truck. Uh, it's not a shooter, it's not a story-based game, it's it's just a meaningless task job where you drive a truck, but for some reason it's so flippin' addictive. It's just, it's amazing. And also, that it's the same game that I would choose for editing. It's really easy, I sit down, I think the hardest part is recording. I sit down for an hour at a time, I run a load, I talk into the microphone, and then I pretty much just cut it into two videos and boom there are my two euro truck it's just it's easy to it's it's easy to edit it's actually harder to record it but euro truck would be the answer for both of those questions so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video i just want to take this time again to say thank you to everyone 40,000 subscribers in a year I really didn't think when I started my channel that I'd still be at it a year later and I did not think I would have 40,000 subscribers. Um, 
I have to say thank you to all of you and thank you to everyone in Code Zero. Because honestly, without them being in my videos, I don't think I would be where I am. They kind of bring light to the my videos and they just, they add something that I can't bring just myself. So thank you to everyone in Code Zero. Thank you to everyone that watches and that subscribed and views and likes and comments. And if you haven't signed up on the Code Zero forums, go sign up. We would love to see you over there. I, I mean, I just, I can't say how much I appreciate all of your guys' support, and I hope you will join me for many, many more years to come. And thank you again. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I answered some questions. I plan on doing some more Q&As. Uh, keep an eye out on my Facebook if you want to see when I'm asking for uh, questions. And yeah, I will uh, see you guys in the next video. Hope you have a good day slash night, and goodbye.